Now that we've set the size of the basketball, we're going to animate it to make it bounce on the ground. Select the basketball and use the transform widget to move it upwards outside of the format boundaries. By default, elements outside of the format aren't visible. But if you uncheck the scissor icon at the bottom left of the viewer, you can display elements outside of the format. Now the basketball is visible, even though it's outside of the format boundaries. This makes it easier to see when the layer enters or exits the screen. When moving the basketball, you can see that the position values change in the transform section of the properties panel on the right. Let's go back to the beginning of the animation and move the basketball up a bit. To animate the position parameter, we're going to start by displaying it within the stack. If you expand the layer's transform section, you'll see the position parameter. The button that looks like an empty square or box is where you can add animation keys, also known as keyframes. The goal is to set a key position for this layer at a specific moment. Click on the diamond shape to add a keyframe, which will also appear on the right in the dope sheet. Let's advance by 2 seconds and move the basketball downwards using the widget. Since we added a keyframe earlier, a new keyframe has automatically been created in the dope sheet. Click on the scissor icon again to reactivate the option that displays only the area inside the format boundaries. Scrub the timeline to see the interpolation between these two keyframes. You can just hide the basketball net so it doesn't block the view. Autograph has these two key positions in mind as the start and finish, and will interpolate between them. Press the play button or the spacebar to play the animation and see the interpolation autograph created. The closer the keyframes are to each other, the faster the basketball will move. The controller at the bottom of the timeline allows you to zoom in on the timeline using these two side handles. You can also move the block from left to right. Pressing the Alt key while scrolling the mouse wheel allows you to zoom in and out. To zoom in with more precision, you can also press the Alt and Control or Command keys while clicking with the left mouse button. While zooming in and out, the playhead will be used as a reference point, just like how the mouse is used as a reference point when zooming in the viewer. Take some time to get used to using keyframes and move them to slow down or speed up your animation. Let's place the second keyframe at 2 seconds. To do this, Position the playhead at 2 seconds. And when you start moving this keyframe while holding down the shift key, you'll feel it snap when you get closer to the playhead. The shift key lets you snap elements to each other. For example, you can snap the playhead to a keyframe or to the end of a layer. Or you can move a keyframe while snapping it to these elements, whether it be the playhead, the start or end of a layer, or another keyframe. Take the time to get used to enabling snapping, which will save you a lot of time when moving different elements. In this video, we went over how to add keyframes to a parameter, view a layer outside of the format boundaries, and navigate in the timeline. 